Included with all of our kits are these handy rail shaping templates which give you a good guide to work towards as far as your rail shape goes. The templates are easy to use with it being clearly marked on which position on the board that the rail shape should match. But of course, this is just a guide and if you wanted to go your own rail style on your board, you should do that by all means. Now you're only gonna need a handful of tools to shape your board. A small hand plane or a block plane like this is going to be the real workhorse as this will remove the bulk of the material. On top of a hand plane like that, you're also going to want a rasp. We use a few different styles here. This looks fancy, but it's just a standard Japanese style rasp. But of course, a more traditional Western style rasp is gonna be just fine. Now, if you have a spoke shape, this can be useful, but it's definitely not needed. This is just good for areas where you have a lot of rocker and the sole of the block plane isn't gonna be able to make contact. But like I said, that's not necessary because you can easily do the same thing with your rasp. On top of those, you're just gonna need some basic things like a pencil, a tape measure, and that's really it. Now the first thing that we're going to do is mark the cross sections that we have on our rail template onto our board. So on this case here, we've got one at 100 mil, 300, 800, and 1700, and that is all gonna be referenced from the tail. So here it's a fish, so getting the tail just right is a little bit tricky, but eyeballing it is good enough for this stage. Now looking at these rail profiles, you can see that here at the tail, we have a hard, sharp edge at the bottom, and then as we work closer to the nose, it starts to round over into a soft edge. But if we look at the top edge only, ignoring the bottom, we can see that everything has a fairly common radius. So the first thing that we do is we mark an outline all the way around the perimeter of our board by locking our fingers together so that it's about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch away from the edge. This line is gonna be what our radius gets shaped onto. Now ideally you'll be working on a pair of saw horses so that you have free access all the way around your board. But if you haven't got that, you can easily do it on your workbench. Just roll up a couple of towels and put it under the board to stop it from wanting to rock around and get away from you. Now when it comes to the actual shaping process, we're not going to be looking at the radius of the curves, but more what do we have to do to achieve these results and everything will always start with creating a 45 degree angle on the edge of your board. So the first step that we do is create a flat so that it is a consistent, continuous 45 degree chamfer along the entire edge. From there, we start breaking down the corners bit by bit until we start getting a nice rounded profile. Now you'll notice that what I'm doing here is long strokes which go most of the way along the length. While short rapid stroke might feel good, what you're actually creating is a low spot in one area. So by taking long continuous strokes, you're keeping the finish consistent and that's quite important when it comes to our rails. So here you can see that we have a nice flat chamfer and that is the sort of progress that we're looking for. So now that we have a chamfer established on the entire edge, we can start working towards the profiles that are shown on our template. So the idea here is that we press our template onto our rail and we continually check our progress from this point forward. At this stage, it's okay to take shorter strokes in these specific areas, but do leave some extra material there before taking it to the final profile as we are going to need to tidy this up with some long continuous strokes to make it a consistent rail. So to reiterate, what we're doing here is taking those newly defined edges from our chamfer and working them into the required radius. Now, as I'm working this, I'm also only working up to the line that we scribed on the deck and not taking it any further. So now that we have our rail close in every section, now we have to refine it to make a nice consistent edge. And that is where those long continuous strokes come in with our block plane. Now, up until this stage, I was working with the plane set fairly aggressive with the stock removal. Now I'm gonna wind it back out so only a very small amount of the blade is protruding. So we're taking very thin, whispery cuts. This is gonna mean that instead of creating big flat spots, we're only gonna be removing very small sections. Now, while you do this, you're also gonna be wanting to roll the block plane slightly the further up you progress to create a consistent curve. So like I mentioned, I've already shaped the other side of this board. So we're gonna jump forward to as if you've shaped both sides of your board at this stage as well. So while things are looking really good on that template, which we've kept checking, we're now coming in with our hands and we're just gonna start feeling the edges. Now your hands will be able to pick up 
if the radius feels off or if it feels like it's maybe a little bit wobbly. But the real secret to this is to not look at it. So you're really just looking away and you're feeling the board and it feels nice and consistent. So here I can feel that this radius isn't coming as low on the rail as it should. So I've got a little bit more to go on this side. But as far as consistency goes, it's feeling nice and it's looking good as well. So here I know I have to have a little bit more stock removal and then we can move on to using the rails. So now that we've used the block plane, I'm going to use a raft to come in and finish it up. So the same principle applies, long even strokes, but what I do with the rasp, instead of keeping it at a fixed angle, I'm instead going to be sweeping on an arc and further shaping that rail. So with the top half of the rail tuned in, we can now flip it over and do the underside. So the underside gets shaped in the same way as before. So we've marked our locations along the length that correspond to our template here. And now it's just a matter of checking the fit at every location and creating the chamfers along the edge where we need to create the radiuses. Now, just take note though, on most of our designs, we use a very hard edge at the tail of our board. So be sure to mark where not to touch on your rails and leave it at a crisp 90 degree corner. All right, so once you have your underside roughed in, once again, you come over it, feel it with your fingers, get in the creases, and just feel that it's symmetrical and feeling nice and even on both sides. Now, if it's feeling good, now's the time to come in and just clean it up, tune it in, and you can do that using either sandpaper or a rasp, or obviously a combination of the two. Now this sandpaper is just an 80 grit disc that I folded in half and I like these cloth back ones because they seem to just last a bit longer and the fact that they're cloth backed means they're a little bit stiffer as well so they don't dip into all the valleys and do a better job at smoothing things out. <laughs> So with the rails all sanded, the last thing left to do is give it a quick sand to tidy it up and shaping is done. From here, we're really close to the end. All we need to do is glass it and install our fin plugs and deck hardware. 